Hello and welcome. We are wrapping up this week's series by doing formal charges. We have already looked at explaining how to draw Lewis dot diagrams. We also looked at drawing the Lewis dot diagram for the, the phosphate ion. So we look at which structure was appropriate or which one is not. And so let's dive into formal charges. And so when you talk about formal charges, you're talking about the charges that are assigned to atoms in a covalent molecule. The formula to determine formal charges or to determine the formal charge on each atom, first you have to determine the actual valence electrons, let's call it V, and then we're going to minus the non-bonding electrons, let's call it NB, then you minus the bonding electrons divided by 2, let's call it B divided by 2. Let's jump into our first example. Our first example here is methanol. Methanol is the same thing as formaldehyde. So let's first find the charge on the hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen, they are the same. So the charge for one will be the charge for the other based on how the structure is drawn. So the valence electron for hydrogen is one. Remember, hydrogen is from group one. According to this structure, we have no non-bonding electrons. So there are zero non-bonding electrons here. The bonding electrons for hydrogen is two. There are two bonding electrons. So it's going to be two divided by two. So one minus zero minus one gives zero. Now let's look at carbon. Carbon is in group four, so there are four valence electrons. Based on this structure, we have zero non-bonding electrons, but we have eight bonding electrons. Two here, two more, four, and then four, eight. So it's eight divided by two. So we're going to have four minus zero minus four gives zero. Let's check for oxygen. Oxygen is in group six. So there are six valence electrons for oxygen. We have four non-bonding electrons. Those are in green. And then we have four bonding electrons as well. And it's going to be 4 divided by 2. So it's going to be 6 minus 4 minus 2, which gives 0. And so this appears to be a very stable and satisfied structure. Let's look at the carbonate ion. The carbonate ion has a 2 negative charge. So let's quickly jump into this. Again, let's start with carbon. And carbon has a valency or valence electron of four, no non-bonding electrons, so zero non-bonding electrons around the carbon. We have eight bonding electrons, all these electrons that are represented by red, and so we're going to have four minus zero minus four gives zero. For this oxygen, which is different than the two oxygen, you notice here we have a double bond. These two oxygen atoms, we have single bonds. So for this one is different, so we treat it differently. Okay? So remember, once, even though the atoms are the same, but if they are bonded differently, then you have to calculate them differently. Okay? So I just want to point that out quickly. So oxygen is in group six. This oxygen here has four non bonding electrons, and they are four bonding electrons, so 4 divided by 2. So it's going to be 6 minus 4 minus 2 gives 0. Now let's look at the oxygen. And these two oxygen, they are the same. They have the same non-bonding electrons and the same type of bond, which is a single bond between each. So here we're going to have the valence electron of oxygen is 6. The non-bonding electron is going to be 6. 6 electrons around each. And the bonding electrons will be 2. And so 2 divided by 2. So it's going to be 6 minus 6 minus 1 
which equals to negative one on each. So each of these oxygen has a negative one charge, if you notice it, right? And so it amounts to a total of two negative. All right, and that's why carbonate is a two negative charge. Now let's look at this ammonium iron. Now the ammonium iron, look carefully, let's, let's start out by calculating um, nitrogen first. Nitrogen is in the group five. We have no non-bonding electrons. We have eight bonding electrons, two, four, six, eight. So eight divided by two. So we have five minus zero minus four gives positive one. So nitrogen has a formal charge of positive one in ammonium. Let's calculate the formal charges for the hydrogen atoms. And so they are the same, so let's calculate one. So hydrogen is from group one. It has one valence electron. We have no non-bonding electrons, so there are zero. We have two bonding electrons for each, so two divided by two. So it's going to be one minus zero minus one, which gives zero. So all the hydrogen atoms, they are zero charge. They have zero formal charge. All right, and so the overall charge on the molecule here is positive one. All right, let's look at this one. This is the last example here. And so this is sulfur trioxide. If you draw the lowest dot structure like this, we're going to calculate the formal charges on each atom. And so let's start with sulfur. And so sulfur is from group six. Notice here again, we have zero non-bonding electrons. We have eight bonding electrons. So we're going to be eight by, divided by two. So we have six minus zero minus four equals to positive two. So the formal charge on sulfur in this structure is two positive. For oxygen, again, this oxygen is different from the other two. So therefore, we're going to have six from the valence electron for oxygen. Non-bonding electron here is four. Bonding electrons is also four. So it's going to be six minus four minus two, which gives zero. So there, there's a zero charge on this oxygen. For the other two oxygen atoms, which are the same in terms of bonding and appearance in this structure, six valence electron from group six. There are six non-bonding electrons, and there are two bonding electrons. So it's going to be two over two. So therefore, we have six minus six minus one equals to negative one. So each of these oxygen, they are each of them as a negative one charge. So if you notice this structure, two positive, two negative will give a total of zero charge overall. But looking at the structure, you can see the structure is unstable as it is. So our objective now is to make it more stable. So if we draw the structure and shift around the double bond, shift around a, a single bond from the oxygen to make a double bond between the oxygen and the sulfur, the structure will become more stable. So now let us now look at our formal charge on each atom. So for the sulfur now, if you notice it, sulfur is from group six. Now we have zero non-bonding electrons. The bonding electrons now is now 12. So 12 divided by two. So here we're going to have six minus zero minus six gives zero. So now sulfur becomes a zero charge. Now, now, all the oxygen now, they are the same, if you notice them, right? Double bond each, only four non-bonding electrons. It's so going to be valence electron, which is six. The non-bonding electrons will be four. The bonding electrons here will be four. So four around each oxygen, right? Divided by two. So we have six minus four minus two equals to zero. So all the atoms in the structure now, they have zero charge. And so this is a more stable form of the sulfur trioxide. So this will be our best Lewis dot structure. So once we calculate our formal charge, we can know exactly if it is um, the best or most stable structure. We can determine what is bonding, what is shearing, and so on. All right, so again, it is my pleasure to share these lessons with you. And I'm also appreciative of you watching. And please learn how to drown the negatives 
by creating a sea of positives. Be safe, keep good, keep positive until we meet again. See you next time.